Hello, Randy K7AGE with part 5 of the ZZRX-40 40, 40 meter direct conversion receiver build. Okay, time to start building the enclosure. They have two approaches that are written in the manual here. One is to assemble the enclosure without soldering until all the pieces are in place, hold together with tape on the corners or with a few rubber bands around it, then solder all four edges and four corners. Or assemble and tack solder one edge at a time after the four edges are tacked on in a line, add additional solder tack points and solder all the edges. So, um, not sure which way I'm going to go. But first we turn the page and it says to break all the pieces apart. So let's go ahead and break these. You just bend them and they should snap. There it goes. And you want to be careful how you handle these because you don't want to be scratching up the red solder mask. Okay, so the next step is to sand or file these edges down. They're kind of sharp when you uh, just break them apart. So I'm going to take this outside and uh, I'll be back with some filed edges. Okay, so I filed down the edges and it only took like maybe three to six very light passes with the file to go down the edges where it's broken apart. You'll feel it feel the edge go away and it just becomes smooth. That's all you need to do. Very light file. When you are putting these pieces together, you want to make sure you have all the shiny corners together because this is where you're going to solder. This is the outside and this is the inside. So I'm going to try and put this together now. Okay, so I don't need the top. I'm going to get that out of the way. And I've played with this a little bit on my own here before <laughs> starting the camera. And you end up not having enough hands. Maybe you have somebody else to help you because you know you got to hold these things together. And oops, see it, they fall down and stuff. So the idea of getting enough of this together <laughs> with only two hands to put rubber bands around is kind of unlikely. So I think tape will will help. Okay, so I have a bunch of the blue tape here cut. So I'm just going to start putting these together a little bit and it's going to be a little sloppy when you first start. I'm going to put on this side this slide in the corner and another piece of tape. Now maybe a piece of tape down the, this side here. Now it becomes starting to become much more solid. And I got the, oops, that's didn't go down far enough. Anyway, um, I think just kind of put it together and then you can go back and square up the joints and such as you get more of them together here. So you get the idea, just keep working at this as tight and square as you can. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working on this. Yeah, a little more tape there. One of the things you may have to watch out a little bit for is on the top edges, um, they can go in a little bit. I don't know if the tape will help hold that out. Just adjust that with my finger so that's right on the edge there. Extra piece of tape across the top, and then I can just kind of push that out, even it up with the edge, It'll help uh, line the top here. Just checking it. I just want to see what it looks like when I just put the top on it. It feels uh, flush around all the edges. There'll be standoffs that come up from the bottom corners here up to the top that this will screw on. And the receiver sneaks in here and the um, connectors, the nuts on the connectors will help hold that as well as the, the nuts on the pot. So I think I'm ready to try and solder some of this. Okay, so I'm ready to give this a try. On my variable temperature iron, I've turned the temperature uh, basically all the way up. Uh, I just have the small little pointed tip. I don't have a chisel tip, which might be, be better. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, get some solder. Now, you don't need to solder these all these seams. You can if you want, but it's not needed. So I'm going to see if I can get some in this area right here to begin with. So, try not to melt the camera. Get some solder on the iron here. And I was able to put this in my little vise. Oh, that 
Ooh, that flowed quickly. Yeah, that worked nice. And so I'm just going to put a little solder in the three quarters here. Here it flowed. And on this piece here. And it bridged across. So I think that's going to be okay. And just check the alignment of the edges, feel around, make sure everything's lined up. The solder. There, boom, it flowed. Just put the point right down across both edges. And feed the solder. You can see it go across the bridge there. And it just goes across the joint. You see it flows. It flows pretty good. I see it turns silver. I don't want to get too close to the standoff holes. They make the standoff stand up a little bit. Come on. That one doesn't want to go. I'm just going to take a look here how much room the standoff takes. Yeah, you you want to be careful about getting too much solder near the holes there. So I'm going to pause and take this out of the vise and take a look at it before I do any more soldering. Okay, I'm just going to check the, the edges here around the sides and the bottom. They all uh, feel flush. Okay, now I'm going to solder the upper corners. Let's do this corner here. I'm doing it about a quarter inch down. There we go. There it goes. And I'm ready to do the, the last top corner. And there we go. Okay, I'm thinking I'm going to take the tape off now and just see how it all looks. If it looks good, I'll do some more soldering. That is really solid. So I'm just going to do a couple more tacks around the edges. Okay, so I've soldered in the corners, and then a couple, one or two places in the center of all the joints, and it's uh, really very, very strong. It appears to be very square, and uh, I think when the top goes on, it'll fit very nicely. So let's continue on. A four AA cell battery pack, it can just fit here on the bottom. I'm going to power mine through the power jack. So there's a couple of instructions how to, how to deal with that. Okay, the next thing they want you to do is to place the, uh, the board through the uh, inside so that the uh, connectors are sticking through and go ahead and put the nuts on. So I have a lock washer. And a nut for the BNC. And a little nut for the audio jack. And then I'm just going to use a wrench here and be very careful as I tighten the nut that I don't scratch the, the case. The red will scratch. And this doesn't need to be super tight. It's a pair of needle nose, but be real careful not to scratch it. Okay, the instructions now want you to place the top cover on and basically button everything up. But I'm going to skip this for right now. And... Um, I'm going to step ahead here a couple pages and where it talks about the VFO, the variable frequency oscillator. So there's a trim cap here, trim cap here that you uh, use to set the lower frequency range on the 40 meter band. Well, once the cover's on, you can't adjust that. So I'm going to connect this up. And I'm going to use my FT817 to receive the local oscillator so I can determine what frequency it's on. Okay, so I have power hooked up in a speaker and I have my 817. So I thought the first thing I would try, see if I can hear the oscillator, I'm going to switch it over to the crystal position. So the power is off and I need to move these jumpers over to the other pins. Okay, and I've hooked up to the antenna jack, just this clip lead which we just try laying it across there. The crystal is 7030. 
So let me turn this on. And I'm going to turn up the volume here. And the radio's at 7013. So I'm going to just dial it up. There it is. So I'm picking up the oscillator real strong. I don't even need to have it close. And the tuning knob does vary the crystal. So it goes from, I'm going to say 28.7, turn this all the way up, to about 30.5, so about 2 kilohertz. Okay, so I have the jumpers back in the VFO position. We turn it on. And what they say to do is to turn the tuning control all the way counterclockwise and then adjust the capacitor for it to be at 7.0 megahertz. So let's uh, turn this up and see if I can find out where it's sitting at the moment here. Okay, there it is at um, 6.981. So I'm going to turn this up to 7.0. And I'm using a plastic tuning stick with just a small metal blade in there. A screwdriver will be will change the capacitance way too much. There it is. It's really quick. There it is. Well, I got lucky. There it is. It's at six nine nine nine. I think I'm just going to leave it there. Let's turn this all the way to the other end. And I'm using the other knob here. It changes the radio on kilohertz steps. And find the top end here. And it tops out at about 7.351. So you could set it so you're a little below the band. You have enough, enough room. I got it pretty close, so I'm just going to leave it. Okay. I Kind of missed a step here. I didn't put the uh, standoffs in here before I put it, the circuit board in, but it shouldn't be a problem. So they want you to take a, a screw and go through the rubber foot. And it goes through the bottom. And then the standoff goes down over that. Turn it by finger here. So you do that on all four corners and you have the standoffs in then. Okay, I have the four standoffs all installed and tightened down. The next thing I want you to do is just place the top cover over the radio. Uh, install the washers and nuts for the um, for the two pots. Start these. Don't tighten them down yet. Now put the four corner screws in. And I have a nut driver that fits the potentiometer's nuts, so I can use that to tighten those. Otherwise you could use a wrench. You want to be careful you don't scratch the, the red solder mask. Put the knobs on. And there's a set screw. You may have to back that out a little bit. And the set screw goes opposite the flat on the shaft. It's all done. See if it works. The volume. Now this volume isn't in the audio stage. It's, it's right across the, basically, antenna. So if you get a very strong signal, it may overload. You may have to turn it down. Tuning is very fast. Uh, 
So tuning the receiver with this small knob requires very fine adjustments. The mod I'm going to do is replace it with this big old knob that I found. And now I'll have a much larger diameter that I can adjust. So I'll just take off the uh, small knob and replace it with the larger knob and rise it up off the uh, top here just a little bit so it clears the LED. And that'll make it much easier to tune now. So, this brings it to the end. I finished building the ZZRX40 40 meter direct conversion receiver kit and uh, it was a lot of fun. I know it was long, a lot of videos, a lot of long videos, but I wanted to show the detail of all the steps to, to build this kit. It's a, it's a simple kit, there's not a lot of parts, it's, it's fairly easy to build. And mine worked first time off. So the elegance of this receiver design is that it's very simple. You know, two integrated circuits, no tuning, no coils to wind. This won't perform like an ICOM 7300. You're going to have to be very sensitive with the, with the tuning, and the larger knob really helps that. It's a small box, and uh, you know, this and a wire uh, probably doesn't need much of a wire. You could go outside, and if you're out somewhere, plug it in and then tune around and see what you can pick up. I think you'll be amazed. It, uh, seems to work very well. So that's all. It's Randy K7AGE 73 and I gotta think about some other videos to make. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>